Welcome to our Sunday online worship service of First Presbyterian Church of Sterling and Myersville Presbyterian Church of Long Hill Township, worshiping together. We are happy to have our second Sunday lead by our new pastors, Reverend Stephanie Munsell. The mission of the month for June is Village to Village. Our joint church mission committee has chosen Village to Village as the mission of the month for June. Village to Village supports vulnerable children through education, medical care, nutrition, and social and spiritual mentoring. It builds relationships with children and families one at a time, seeing them as individuals with untapped potential to change their communities. Next week, we will let you know more about this mission in the online service. And now, let us worship God. Please join me in the responsive call to worship with the words on the screen. Gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and blessed by God, we come to worship one holy God. O oh God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Your majesty is the music of the starry skies. And yet, even children of dust can sing your praises. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Advocate, let our gratitude and joy be made known. O oh God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Holy is your name. Let us pray. We give you thanks for all the ways that you bless our lives, the beauty and the abundance of nature, the love of family and friends, the gift of faith. Help us to be aware of the many ways you make yourself known to us. Fill our hearts with a sense of awe and wonder in this time of prayer and praise. As we celebrate Trinity Sunday, we take a moment to be honest with God and ourselves about our failings, knowing that our prayers will be met with God with love. 
Let us confess our sins together. Holy God, you are three in one and one in three. We praise you, source of life, who created us and called us good. Praise to you, Jesus Christ, born in our flesh, sent to give us new life. Praise to you, Holy Spirit, for the energy you bring us each day. Reveal to us how to live as your people and to witness to your wonder and grace. God of mystery and mercy, you know the details of our lives. You see the sin and sorrow we bear. You see the problems and possibilities we face. You see how we fit into the world around us and how we rub each other the wrong way. We confess that we do not always see what you see. Open our eyes to the truth of our lives. Touch us with your grace so that we may be fully who you made us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. from the Old Testament, Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. 
Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor you have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Listen for the word of God. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When he saw them, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the word of God. Amen. When was the last time that your heart swelled with tremendous joy and gratitude? A feeling of happiness, but deeper and fuller. Not just fun or even exhilaration, but that feeling that bursts your heart open in an expansive and awe-inspiring way. It's a joy which comes from the recognition of God's goodness in our life. And when I think about that, I think about the moment my stepdaughter Rebecca's name was called on her recent college graduation. Oh boy, did my chest just tighten and my eyes welled up as she crossed that stage. Blessings. I think about the day that my husband Rich and I were married 11 years ago, how my face, it hurt from smiling so hard and so much. Blessing. I think about, of course, when my son was born, Crosby, who is now going to be, he's going to be 20 this summer. Blessing. What are those oh-so-joyous, big life-affirming moments for you? And what about the little moments of life that are joy-giving? You know them, the smaller experiences of life that maybe we don't mark with anniversary celebrations or parties or special photos. They're scattered in our life. Can you name some of those moments? I can myself if I really try. A loving pet who snuggles up like my little Evie and Ellie are kittens, or my old dog, Dinah. Blessings. A dear friend who sends a message, a text that makes me laugh. Blessings. Reaching the top of a magnificent waterfall. Blessings. Seeing a favorite band performed and performing a favorite song. A blessing little moments of God's blessings, and they add up, and they are so life-giving. And there are more of those moments in our lives than we realize. I'll say that again. There are more of these little joy-bringing, life-affirming, gratitude-inducing gratitude moments when we are blessed, more of those than we realize. And I say that for two reasons. 
First, because the science tells us so. This is what I mean. It has been studied and proven that we humans are geared to pay more attention to the negative experiences of our lives than the positive ones. There are good and positive experiences and moments all around us, but we miss them. The language of psychology and uh, neurological studies call this the negativity bias. We humans give more weight to negative experiences over positive experiences. So here's an example. You make a presentation, and afterwards 10 people come up to you and they congratulate you and they give you positive feedback. One person makes a slightly critical comment. Guess what you think about? That one comment. Or you're out hiking with your friends and you're enjoying the gorgeous scenery and suddenly you see on the path a rattlesnake. Now the snake immediately slithers away. You're in no danger. However, later when you're asked about that hike, you remember the 30 second snake incident more vividly than the other 45 minutes of beautiful scenery. Negativity bias. Now our ancestors who were out in the woods needed to remember that snake to survive so they wouldn't stumble on a poisonous one again. So that's why our brains register the bad. But unfortunately, we don't need that anymore, but we've retained that negative cognitive bias. And so we don't register the good, even if it's there. And here's the second reason why I say that there are so many life-affirming, joy-causing, gratitude-inducing experiences in life. Blessings. Blessings abound that we do not see or register or recognize. And number two, this reason is perhaps the most important. It is because God, who God is and how God created this world, is good. Goodness is the standard. It is God's intention for creation. This is why we can feel so wrong about injustice and hate and greed and exclusion, etc., because it's counter to what our Creator intended. God shares God's goodness and joy and abundant life with us generously. This is the nature of God. So this is Trinity Sunday. Often when we think about God on this Sunday, we reflect on how the three persons of the Trinity, three in one, are so different. We remember God, the Almighty Father, everlasting Creator. Separately, we remember the Son, Savior, Jesus, Christ Child, risen Christ. And we just marked Pentecost when we remembered the Holy Spirit with the rush of wind and flame the power of God poured out over us. This Trinity Sunday, I want to remind you that while we celebrate the diversity of God's self-revelation, we also have to remember the unity. God is always the one and same God, same in nature and character, regardless of what we call God. Here's what I mean. Genesis tells us about God, the Almighty Creator, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, shaping the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth, the soaring mountains and the depths of the ocean. God made the wonders of all creation and, scripture tells us, pronounced them good. Psalm 8 is a hymn, and you heard it today, to God's glory and majesty. And it wonders out loud about this creative God and asks the question, why does the almighty God, maker of all the beauty of heaven and earth, care about us? But God does. God as creator made humankind in God's image and likeness, made from goodness for goodness. The almighty God of creation loves us, is good, and gives us life in all of their fullness. And God wants joy for us. God the Father blesses. Now God as Christ is no different. 
From John, we remember the words, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and all things came into being through him. We read that on Christmas, when we remember the birth of God's word, when the word became flesh and lived among us. Jesus. Jesus is a creator as well, a life giver. As God incarnate, Christ feeds the hungry, healed the sick, shows abundant love and encourages abundant life. Christ's blessings. We proclaim God born in flesh came so that we might have life and have it abundantly. God as Christ lived and died and rose again so that nothing could separate us from the love of God, not now and not into eternity. So, God as creator is good, Jesus Christ as God is good, Jesus loves us, we sing that. And Jesus gives us life in all our fullness, Jesus blesses. And guess what I'm gonna say, the same thing, the Holy Spirit is no different. Who is the Spirit? But the power of God poured out on us. And what does the power do? It gives us life. It's life-giving. It inspires life in us. It sustains us, whether we're reading scripture or praying or having passion fueled within us for something that we like to create ourselves or to work towards justice. The Spirit blesses. God is good and gives us abundant life. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all creators, one God, same character, who offers us life, same nature, who offers us fullness. God blesses. Now today, I read to you the passage which, des which described Jesus' final lesson to his disciples. Jesus came to the disciples, the 11 that were left, and said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. These 11 disciples are commissioned. They're given a mission to go and to teach more people to follow God's commands. Baptism is the outward sign of an inward change to follow the ways of the Father, Son, and Spirit. One God, same character, same nature. Today we remember the ways of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, who commands us what? To do good, to do what is right, to be loving, to be aware and thankful for the many blessings that we have in our lives, and then to share what we know with others. Jesus' commission passes along to us. We are called to share that love, that grace, that abundant joy and goodness with others. That is our command, to bless one another. Now on this Sunday, our congregations will together celebrate communion. On communion, we are given a little bit of bread and a tiny swallow from a little cup. And those two morsels are to remind us of the goodness of God. And we are to savor that bread and that juice. And savor is the perfect word. When we savor food, we intentionally and slowly and mindfully enjoy it as much as possible. So today we will savor bread and juice on Sunday as the body of Christ. But we're not meant to just savor bread and juice on communion Sunday. God calls us to savor the precious moments of joy and abundance in everyday life. To see God's grace here and now. To savor the big moments you know, the anniversaries, the remission from cancer, the weddings, the births. Savor the blessings. We are meant to savor the little morsels as well. The flowers that are blooming. The kids that are playing and laughing outside. 
time with our friends, visits to the beach or the mountains, songs on the radio, friends at church. Fred Bryant is a social psychologist at Loyola University in Chicago, and he has actually studied what happens when we savor positive experiences. He says, savoring is like swishing an experience around in our mind. His studies show that there's all sorts of concrete benefits if we savor positive moments in our life, the big ones and the small ones. It strengthens our relationships. It improves our mental and physical health and we can find more creative solutions to problems. So seeing and being mindful of God's rich blessings in our lives is good for us. It's what God wants for us. So I pray that you will taste and see the goodness of God, that you will let that be your calling, an orientation and expectation of God's goodness in your life. Be aware, savor, practice seeing God at work, Father, Son, and Spirit, encouraging the good, sharing the love, inviting us and you to joy. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith, a brief statement of faith. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and the apostles rules our faith, and life in Christ through the scriptures, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls us all to ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples, to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in the church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace.
Let us pray. Like creation on the first morning, O God, we pray that we may tingle with anticipation of your goodness and wonder flowing into our lives. O God, who shapes all things, may we join creation in worshiping you. God of wonder, as rivers filled the valleys and ran into the seas, as flowers sprang forth in meadows, as grace unfathomable sprang forth, may we join all creation in emulating you, who is as close to us as our very flesh. As God's mind overflowed with dreams, you brooded over the waters as spirit, stirring the clouds with your wind, breathing life into all that is. Spirit of fanciful faith, plant seeds of peace in us and help us to join all creation in dancing with you, who is as close to us as our very breath. Oh, we pray for peace and an end to violence. We pray for health and healing for all who are on our prayer lists. We pray for teachers and students as another school year comes to a close. This month, we pray for members of the LGBTQ plus community that all may know your great love, O oh God. And may we, your people who claim to follow you, God of love and justice, May we be vocal and outspoken against all bias and bigotry. And Lord, in this beautiful season of growth, may remind us to be grateful stewards of your beautiful earth. O oh God in community, Holy One, may we join all creation in worshiping, emulating, and dancing with you. O oh Lord, hear our prayer.
Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, seeking to be open and aware of God's blessings each and every day. Amen. Alleluia. Spirit of the Lord.